Hello, my name is Ariel and I'm back with a new video and in today's video I am in a pickle. Have you ever had a project that you were excited for, you even bought all the materials for it and had all the things prepped for it, but then when it came down to actually doing that project your brain goes, I don't want to do that. Which is exactly what I have been suffering through for the last couple of weeks. I have been doing an extensive amount of avoidant cleaning, so my home is spotless but I have not done one iota on my project. So I've decided instead of trying to force myself to do this project that I just don't want to do, I'm going to do a whole new project. Which is a long way to say that I am going to be doing this Annie Adams mail order pattern. It is got a number, I'm sure. I'm going to be doing this Annie Adams mail order pattern 4735. Hopefully that's right. I'm going to be doing this Annie Adams mail order pattern 4735, originally printed in the 1940s, 50s era. I got it from Costume, what is it? Costume sewing? Costume pattern shop? Oh no. I got it from the Costume World shop from Etsy, link in the description below. I really like wrap patterns because wrap patterns are easy to adjust size-wise, so if I am feeling a little bloated or gained weight like in the last couple of years, I don't have to worry about needing to adjust my clothes because they are manually adjustable, which is great. As far as the material goes, I'm going to be using this cute vintage cotton. I think it is from the 70s. I'm not entirely sure. It did have a first life though of being a fitted bedsheet, that much I do know. So this is really a upcycle or recycle project, which I really like, especially since this material has been in my materials bin for quite a while. I don't actually remember where I got it. I don't think I intentionally bought it. I don't normally work with this vintagey type of fabric or, you know, fabrics that look like they come from the 60s or 70s. Not that there's anything wrong with the 60s or 70s, it's just not my my vibe, if you catch my drift. But because this is summer, I think it will be nice to have a pretty bright florally outfit, and I'm excited for it. So, let us begin. I begin by finding the grain line. This being a cotton material, the direction of the grain matters when I cut. However, this being a bedsheet means it doesn't have a salvage side to tell me what direction the grain goes. So I'll tug the fabric in multiple directions along one raw edge to figure out where the stretch is. With that figured out, I can start cutting out my pieces. I didn't do a whole lot in adjustments, just added about half an inch to the length and about a quarter inch to the width. The original pattern was not too far off from my size, and as a wrap blouse, I assumed it wouldn't need that many adjustments anyway. I will admit now, however, that I was wrong. I ended up making many adjustments to this outfit, and I probably should have made a mock-up to have prevented a lot of time wasted making those adjustments. Which, ironically, time was the reason I chose not to do a mock-up in the first place. Also, also, for the faux peplum shirt skirt, I cut full widths instead of using the pattern piece for size, which was way too much fabric, and I will later regret it, but will be too stubborn to cut it off. In fact, I added to it. I saved the skirt for last as I wasn't sure I'd even have enough left over to make it. I ended up having only enough for a single, comfortable length skirt panel. Not at all enough for a full skirt. So I debated what to do while Sir Paul blessed my workspace with a generous coating of loose fur. I decided to cut off the extra dangly bits. One bit o dangle I cut into equal strips to become the new waistband. And with the other dango bit, I cut into pockets. Then I cut the single skirt panel in half to make two mini skirt panels. Then I angle cut the skirts so they are now narrow at the top and wide at the bottom hem, like a pair of bell bottoms. I, by the way, really was into bell bottoms as a young adult, especially the ones of the yoga pant variety. All that loose fabric around my ankles made me feel like the most majestic Clydesdale. Of course, being 5'1", I probably looked more like a squat pony with thunder calves. 
Finally, before I get into sewing, I iron out several yellow colored bias tapes because I got a feeling I might need them. I run my work by the inspector and then we're all good to go. I began by finishing the hem and calling it a day. Boy, this was the quickest project ever. I am, however, kidding because this project took forever and I wish I would have stopped here. But I kept going by stitching up the front and back pleats. These, by the way, are silly. They turned out like thin little pockets hidden beneath my boob, where I can, between the two, collectively keep a single red vine warm. Next, I sew the back ties to the front panel and then iron it flat. With a bit of ribbon pinned to the back panel, I do a quick fit test where it seems I have made the croppiest of crop tops. Honestly, I don't hate the fit and perhaps the peplum ruffle will add more length and I'll like it more. I finish off the side seams in a micro bias tape and top stitch around the peplum panel before sewing two long loose straight stitches along the top raw edge. I ruche the belly fringe down and pin it to the front of the blouse making sure to get the ruffles as evenly distributed as possible so I may pass my inspection. Once it passes mustard, Sir Paul informs me it is time for my daily cat break. Before I try it on with the tummy ruffle, I pin some yellow lace around the sleeves and I sew that lace down while Sir Paul tests out his camera operating skills. Stop! Sir? How am I supposed to work under these conditions? I can already tell you that I hate it. I think the ruffle is very eye-catching and brings attention right to my stomach. I still think the top is too crappy, so I'm going to add a bias tape belt around the middle. Additionally, I use it around the collar as I tested out the lace off camera and it immediately irritated my skin. I also don't like the sleeve ruffles either, and I'll be taking those off as well. But I will be putting that off to the side for now and I will work on the skirt. First, I attach the four pocket pieces to the skirt panels, then top stitch them down before sandwiching, pinning, and sewing around all the edges. This skirt is hilariously short, by the way. I keep thinking about the 60s era mini skirts. Although I don't think any of them were elasticated, which is what I plan to do with this one. But first, I need to add all of the waistbands together and then fold them over and align them to the top raw edge of the skirt. Once attached, with enough space to get my one inch elastic through, I put my one inch elastic through. When that is all pulled out, I join the elastic bands together with a zigzag stitch before trying it all on together. I tried it with the blouse as is, hoping that maybe with the skirt, I would like the length of the blouse. And you know what? I actually still really don't like it. I think, in fact, it looks worse with the skirt. I feel like someone took that stretch and squash tool in Photoshop and squashed me real good. I look like a toadstool. But there are some things I can do to fix that. First though, I need to finish some of these frayed edges. I serge the interior of the skirt and add a tiny wisp of a ribbon to the center back so it would be easier to put on later. I tack down the elastic in various places so it won't move and it will help keep the distribution of the ruching fairly even. Then I ironed a very narrow rolled hem and top stitched it down. Next, I attach this obnoxiously bright yellow wide lace ribbon that I'd got in a pile of remnants. I had previously tried to dye it, but it is 100% poly baby and did not take a single drop of dye, and I had been scratching my head ever since what to do with it. I think this is a perfect project. I evidently didn't think it was worth filming though, as I don't have any shots of me adding it. Next, for the blouse, I unpin the ruffles and unpick the lace from the sleeves before stitching down the bias tape to the blouse. Next, I added about 5 inches to each side of the bottom ruffle because I decided I want the ruffle to extend and wrap around the whole back. And although the ruffle was too dramatic for the front, it won't be dramatic enough if I did a full wrap around. I need just the right amount of dramatic ruffle. 
I ruch the new side and then do a pin fit test. I like the new length a lot more and I think the ruffle looks more bouncy peplum and less ballerina tutu. So I sew the ruffle in place and then I go around the side seams with a narrow bias tape that I will fold over and hand tack later. I take the rest of the yellow polka dot ribbon and cut it in half, then attach it to the back panels under a piece of bias tape. I flip it over and finish it off, allowing the yellow ribbon to be the new ties. Then I finish the back hem with even more tiny tape. Afterward, all I have left is the hand stitching and I am ready for the reveal. Actually, I lied. So I did try on the blouse after finishing up doing all the hand hemming and I really don't like the way the back looks. I'm usually under the motto that if I can't see it, it's fine. However, after seeing it, I cannot unsee it and it looks like a hot mess and I just, I know I won't be happy if I don't fix it. So to fix it, I decided to add buttons to the back. Of course, I couldn't do normal hand-worked buttons, even though I'm already two weeks behind schedule. No, I had to be extra and make bound buttonholes, because I thought they would look nicer. I do this by cutting two bits of scrap fabric, then marking out the future buttonholes. Before I sew them, though, I add a layer of interfacing to the tie extensions, because I'll be folding these over and using them as lining, and they need a little bit more stabilizing. For bound buttonholes, I sew a box around the march line, and then I snip out the markings and flip the fabric inside out. Then I sew around the openings to secure the tabs in place. And there is a bound buttonhole. Easy peasy. Except for when you do them through a single layer and you meant to do them through two layers. This is why I need supervision. So I cut two new scrap pieces and unpick the work I had just done and re-sew carefully around the holes that I cut, then trim through all of the fabrics and finally top stitch them secure again. It's not perfect, but at least they're now functional. Lastly, I sew a second bias belt to the interior to fold over and hide all those unsightly raw edges. Now it's time for the reveal. project down and boy did this project take forever. I had planned out doing all of this in one weekend but it ended up being like three weekends because I was just having a hard time. You know it's one of those you go on a vacation and then when you come back you gotta go to work and you're like I could use a vacation for my vacation. I am exhausted. I would rather just not go to work and take a couple more days off. And that's sort of how I, I ended up being with my sewing project. But unfortunately, we can't just not do anything forever. So I got my toes back in it with this outfit and hopefully that will kickstart getting stuff out there more quickly. And I, as far as the outfit itself goes, I absolutely love this blouse. I think it is very cute. I like it a lot. I'm normally not a peplum kind of person because I feel like this is very highlighting, which I mean, I don't think it's not highlighting. I just don't find it unattractive. Plain and simple. I like it, so I'm going to wear it. Uh, I don't care for the skirt, and that is because it is so short. I am not used to people seeing my knees. It's not scantily clad. Uh, I'm not used to people seeing above my kneecaps. And that's really weird to me to have my knees exposed. I usually like to have things mid-calf to ankle length, and that makes me feel the most comfortable. 
I can probably fix it by doing what I did here and adding some of this bias tape to the skirt. However, uh, I was pretty done with this project right now and I just want to move on to something else. So I'll probably come back and do that later. Anyway, as far as grading goes, I would give myself, I would say like an A minus because I did have to buy an item, but I did use the entirety of that item. So it wasn't like I bought something and I only used half of it. Now I have to figure out what to do with the other half. I used it all. And that was the buttons that I bought for 99 cents. Right here. And I really like these ones better because I don't have very many orange buttons apparently. And the ones I do are just like really tiny and it wasn't going to work with what I had in mind, so I did have to buy these. I guess I could have used a different color, but I want it to look cohesive and done. I just want it to be done. So I think for 99 cents getting this and a skirt is a good deal, and no complaints there. And again, no leftovers either. I got barely any leftovers of this material. And they'll go into my scrap piles, which I do have an idea for, and I'll get to that at a later date. As far as sewing schedules go, the next video will be my subscriber appreciation for hitting a thousand subscribers. I thank you all so much. I will be making a project for that and then doing some Q&A. If you haven't put a question out there that you do want answered, you can either go back to that community tab and comment, or you can comment on this video. The filming for that should be done sometime by next week. So if you want to ask a question here at the time that this video goes out to the next weekend, I might be able to squeeze it into that video. So expect that in two weeks. And then after that, I have one more project in mind and then I have to figure out what I'm going to do in the meantime until my favorite season comes up, which is October. I have lots of plans for the fall season, but I still got one more video to do for the summer season. So I might end up just doing like a poll in the next coming weeks to see uh, what you guys want to see. Well, and to wrap that up, I would say if you like this video, please consider liking and subscribing. It really helps the channel and I appreciate it so much. Also, I release a new video every Sunday. Nope. <laughs> also, I release a video every other Sunday and you don't want to miss out on that, hopefully. And until next time, though, I hope you have a good day. Bye. Hello, my name is Ariel and I'm back with a new video. And in today's video, I am in a pickle. Neighbors. I got it from, I got it from Costume World Shop. I'll link them in the strip description. I got them. I got it from the Costume World shop and on My hairline doesn't look too silly. I don't care for this one as much. I think it being lopsided is a bit weird. But I think it's supposed to be that way. I feel like I just need like a headband. Ooh, hold on. How's that look? I definitely don't think this is the right color, but this is kind of what I feel like this hair needs. It's just something extra to tame down the back. What do you think? <laughs>